Hey everybody. I am here at Texas Health and Racquet Club with Jessica, general manager, THRC here in San Marcos. So be sure and go check them out. This is my home gym. We are out on the Ninja Warrior course that they are working on right now. Y'all can see the warp wall on the back. I wanted to talk to you guys about Thanksgiving. So with the holidays coming up next week, um, a lot of people tend to get off track and stay off track. So we wanted to give you guys some tips on how to stay healthy, how to approach it with balance, and maybe some healthy swaps that you can do um, on traditional dishes. So our first one, this is a good one. I really want you guys to try this out. Um, a good workout before Thanksgiving. So most of the time your gym's not gonna be open. Y'all aren't open on Thanksgiving, right? Probably won't have a lot of equipment available. And last year, I was actually a week out from my show. And oh my yeah, so <laughs> I worked out in my apartment at 6 a.m. on Thanksgiving morning. Um, and I did a 15 minute circuit. I did 40 mountain climbers, eight burpees, 30 squats, and 25 push-ups, as many rounds through for 10 to 15 minutes. Resting is needed, but as little rest as possible. So I did that in the morning and I was super sore the next day. <laughs> That's a good workout if you guys wanna try. And then Jessica, did you have a, a workout? So just doing anything is perfect, but really there's a ton of local races that happen Thanksgiving morning. So if you are not self-motivated and you won't do burpees in your apartment, you can always try to find, like I get my family together and we go and we run a turkey trot. So look for local races, that's a good thing to do. Or you can also just take a walk, do something before you go to whatever Thanksgiving event that you have going on. Because it boosts everything up, you'll burn more calories all day long. So when you are overindulging, your body is working harder, which makes it a little easier on the waistline. Some healthy swaps for traditional recipes. Most of the time, traditional Thanksgiving recipes are loaded with extra fat, extra sugar, um, and everything in moderation, of course, but whenever you take every single high fat, high calorie dish and you load your plate up two or three times through, that can really add up fast. And that's not even talking about leftovers. So um, you guys know that I'm vegan, so as far as traditional swaps for my own recipes go, um, or if you're trying to focus more towards healthier whole foods, of course, always searching for the most simple ingredients is going to be as beneficial as possible. So a lot of the times the processed foods are gonna have a lot of extra fat, extra added oils, sugars, things that just really aren't completely necessary. So always look for things with more simple ingredients. Try and add in as many whole foods, fruits and veggies as you can to your dishes. Um, one good swap that I found is swapping out cashew milk for the dairy milk. Um, cashew milk has about 30 calories per cup. Two grams of fat, one carb, that's it. So nice and simple, but it's super creamy, really good. It's also good as a coffee creamer. Um, so try and swap that out. And then in, in place of using eggs in recipes, you can swap out half a mashed banana. You can swap out half a cup of apple uh, applesauce. And then you can also mix up one tablespoon of ground flax meal, two tablespoons of water, and you save a bunch of extra calories, extra fats, um, and then of course moderation with everything. That's my biggest thing, moderation. Oh, with, with trade outs, like she said, which is great using those little things on your traditional, so you know you're gonna have your mashed potatoes and you're gonna have some form of dessert, so paying attention to the sugar that you put in. But honestly, if you just make it homemade instead of buy like your pies, your desserts, um, even some of your side dishes, sometimes we buy those from the store, but if you can make it homemade, something as simple as your green bean dish using frozen green beans instead of your canned green beans will help to make it a healthier option. And then if you're making your pies, your desserts, if you're making it from home, you have the opportunity to search for a recipe that will call for, like she said, more simple ingredients. When you search, you can search in Pinterest, Google, wherever you like to search for your recipes. Just search the word clean in front of whatever it is that you like. So if it's pecan pie, pumpkin pie, pumpkin bread, there's a ton of clean recipes that you can look at where the ingredients will be less, things that are a little closer to non-processed that will still leave you feeling like you're satisfied, it'll make you feel like you were able to indulge, but it's not nearly what it would have been if you had used traditional table sugar. Okay, this next question, it's a very good one. Um, as somebody who previously struggled with binge eating, how 
I was there for that. <laughs> yes, yes, she was. How do you recommend moderation and self-control? And I'm gonna start with you because I'd like to hear your thoughts. Because um, most people on Thanksgiving, you use it as an excuse to go all out. Like you load up several plates, you have to try everything, and 99% of the time we eat way more than we need to to even enjoy the food and we end up in a food yeah. coma after two days after you feel like doo-doo so uh, how well, that's the most important thing is that you don't even enjoy it you get so amped up for thanksgiving we think about it all year long i'm gonna eat so much it's gonna be amazing but then you feel so sick and so like bleh that it's not you don't even enjoy it you don't feel good about it you're not even excited so best recommendation i can give you so there's a lot going on on thanksgiving you gotta pick where you're gonna go crazy. So if you are a dessert person and that's where you're gonna get after it, then on meal time, you need to control your portion sizes and really control where that plate is going. So if, if desserts are your thing, let's not do that. If you don't care about pumpkin pie, pecan pie is not your thing, you wanna load up on stuffing and mashed potatoes, then that's where you really focus on your indulging so that it's not all day. If you're more of an alcohol person, like, ooh, I like to have my wine or my cider or my this or my that, then that's your choice. But the key is you can't indulge everywhere because you'll A, you'll feel terrible, and B, it wreaks havoc on your body. Because if you're taking in alcohol and sugar and fat and you're taking it all in in abundance on the same day, normally within like a four hour period, your body just, just kind of shuts down and you feel terrible. So pick your vice and then make everything else controlled. Um, my thing is dessert. <laughs> big time, big time dessert. Um, my recommendations and what really has helped me in this whole journey is reminding myself that I am not deprived of these foods any other time. Um, I mean, sure, traditionally we don't have pumpkin pie all year, but if I want some pumpkin pie throughout the year, make it. Like, what? <laughs> why deprive yourself of those things? So I think to myself, you know, I really want this, I want to eat it all, but at the same time, I'm not restricted of it. So it's not like this, like pumpkin pie is gonna go extinct after Thanksgiving day. So I remind myself that it's something that I can have again in the future. So there's no need to go all out on one meal. Get um, it all in. Yeah, because <laughs> that's, that's the mentality is people think I'm not gonna be able to do this again. If you have that restrictive mindset, you're gonna be more inclined to overindulge. So remind yourself that food of any kind is not going to be extinct. It will be there again. The next day you're going to have leftovers. So it's okay to have in moderation. But I always, um, and I let my clients know to just focus on the actual day as well. So rather than just making it all about food, think about the company you're with, your loved ones, your friends, your family, and try and make the day more about them and spending time with them than it is just solely based on food. So that's one thing. And it's a big mental game, but it takes a lot of time and practice, but slowly not letting food have that power over you is a really, really neat feeling. Um, so you can actually enjoy your food without mindlessly making yourself sick and <laughs> having a food baby for three days. How to deal with temptation in the fridge afterwards. 99% of the time, we're all gonna have tons of leftovers. What do you do with them? You don't want to throw it out. You don't want to waste it. But at the same time, you probably don't need two or three pies in your fridge for the next week. Or do you? Or do you? <laughs> <laughs> so my recommendations with that, again, is just moderation. Have little bits if you really want them. Um, but I always try and get others to take as many leftovers home as possible. Like I am putting food in Tupperwares and sending it home with them, whether they want to or not. I sneak it into their purse. <laughs> but really, it's a lot of the time for a lot of people, if it's not in the house, it's not gonna bother you. So any ways that you can help maybe share that food with others, have uh, friends over the next few days and set up leftovers and let them enjoy it as well so it's not all on you. So you don't have this fridge full of massive amounts of food that you'll feel guilty about wasting or you will feel terrible about eating all of it once. So that's my recommendation for you guys. Yeah, the thing is too, when you eat a lot of overprocessed or a lot of sugar, your body is gonna crave it the next day because it's all of those little fights going on in your body and your body's gonna say more and more and more and more because it tends to not be very nutrient dense 
And so your body tends to crave more and more because it's trying to find those nutrients that aren't there. So like she said, get rid of the food. That is the best advice I can give you. And remember, there's lots of homeless shelters. There's lots of people who don't get to have a great big meal on Thanksgiving. So find an avenue in that sense that you could take your leftovers straight over and then you get to feel good about doing something for someone else. And you also prevent yourself from steamrolling into a week of eating unhealthy. Thanksgiving is amazing, but it is the kickoff to holiday crazy food time. Because if you struggle with Thanksgiving and it leaps into the first week of December, and then boom comes Christmas parties, and then boom comes Christmas, by New Year's, you are not feeling good, and you're ending the year feeling like, ugh, and you don't wanna do that. You wanna go through the holidays when you're seeing all your friends, you wanna feel like you are in the best shape that you could possibly be in. When you see people you haven't seen in a while, you don't wanna feel like you're the worst shape or you're feeling puffy, you wanna feel amazing. So remember that as you go into the holiday as well. Last question, what's your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Stuffing! Ooh, My one. favorite! That is a good one. Do you make it with like apples or? I have no idea to be quite honest. My grandma makes it. Oh, okay. I just eat it. It is my yeah. favorite and that is something I look forward to. So I will indulge. Yeah. That's one thing that's different this year is, is we're figuring different ways to create the same traditional I dishes. I know! Minus the animal that's products. That's so hard! What, that's amazing. What's crazy is um, there's a lot of alternatives out there. Like they have full on like roasts. We've tried a few. That are they're vegan? Delicious, yes. So they're like a wheat based protein, but the texture, flavor, and the look is the same thing. Like if you were to see it in the store and didn't look at the label, you wouldn't know. Like it's like got a little roast what? shape. It's delicious. Um, so that's been really cool for us. As far as favorite dishes go, pumpkin pie, 100%. All things pumpkin. <laughs> I'm basic, <laughs> but really, pumpkin pie has always been my favorite. Um, and I really I like that there's so many different ways that you can prepare it. Some With your pie, pie choice, choose pumpkin. It's the best. So pecan is the worst. Pumpkin is the best and everything in between, your apple, your chocolate, all of that. Stay away from pecan, go for the pumpkin. Pecan's just straight sugar. Yeah. Sugar and pecan in a pie. It's like not really even technically pecan. Yes, like if you look at it, it's about 700 calories. If you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I gained five pounds just thinking about it. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure and hit that thumbs up. If y'all are in the San Marcos area, please come and check us out at THRC. The Ninja Warrior course is open. It is open and they're continuously adding stuff to it. So come and try it out. Say hello to us, say hello to Jessica. And thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Have a good Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.